Hi everyone, I'm David, thanks for clicking and welcome to this video on how to become a profitable trader. In this video, I will explain to you the path to trade like an investment bank. Today, I will give you all the information to become a profitable trader, regardless of whether you are an experienced trader or a beginner. What I will tell you today has great value. You will hardly find that information in other videos or courses, and surely not for free. It comes from years of experience even as a fund manager. What I will explain to you is exactly how I trade every day from my home studio, a method that allows me to get an income month after month. But before continuing, let me introduce myself. My name is David Carley. I am a professional trader, economist and financial analyst. After completing my studies at the University of Pisa in 1994, I attended several trading courses run and organized by Steve Neeson in the United States of America. Since January 2007, I work as a full-time trader. In 2012 and 2013, I worked as a fund manager for a small Italian investment bank. In January 2014, I left to manage my investments on a full-time basis. In 2017, I started my website Trading with David and in 2018, I began to collaborate with a major European commodity investment company, a Swiss company. And now that the introduction is over, let's start. Today I will change the way you see trading. You will change your mindset. You will learn when to enter and when to exit the market. To manage the trade by cancelling the emotions. But first, contrary to common belief, trading is not to play the market. It's not a way to get rich quickly. If you think that, then stop watching this video, because you will be only wasting your time. A few videos on YouTube on how to get rich with gambling are more suitable for you. Trading takes a lot of effort that most traders are unwilling to do, believing that it is enough to press a button on the platform to generate profits, maybe on the advice of some top trader on the internet, the worst thing to do. Do you think I have become a professional trader, that is a person who trades for a living in a day or a month. Mm, no, it wasn't that. I spent several years to study. I had a hard time, most of all at the beginning. I had to overcome several difficulties before I became the trader I am today. And do you know a thing? I didn't finish to learn. So, what do you need to do to become a profitable trader? As I said, the first step is to change your mindset. You have to see trading in a different way. But what is trading? Or better, what is trading really? Trading is an entrepreneurial activity, and 
if you want to be a profitable trader you need to have an entrepreneurial mindset and how can you connect the entrepreneurial mindset to your trading well when starting a company it's of fundamental importance to draw up the business plan so as to avoid bad surprises in trading the business plan is called training plan with which you have to analyze every aspect of your trading activity risks goals and many others now i want to focus your attention on other important aspects if you want to earn with trading you need to increase your competence no system makes you gain automatically as i said before i didn't finish to learn another important word in your growth process is focus diversifying your trading operations on multiple assets is a great thing but avoid to trade with many markets focus only on those you know well then trade with your head don't follow someone else's signals because if you do it in the long run you will be statistically a loser so in this first step you learned that to become a profitable trader you need to change your mindset you have to think like an entrepreneur and the sea trading has an entrepreneurial activity and to make your business work you need an excellent business plan in this case an excellent trading plan now let's see the second step you need to know when to enter and when to exit the market i ask you a question do you think it is possible to trade without even opening the chart just by looking at the price if you find it impossible i tell you it's how i trade after all is it not what traders did in the past by reading the tape and that is how fund managers trade they don't use technical analysis indicators fibonacci and so on the direction of your trading must be to learn the fundamental logic and not to trade by looking at the charts in a few words you have to trade like a fund manager you are probably thinking a fund manager has a lot of money that i have not the information that i have not and then fundamental analysis is hard to learn well wrong wrong and again wrong does a fund manager have much more money than you most likely it's so but it's not a question of money but of method used can a fund manager get more information than you it used to be different but today the type and quality of information remain the same for all investors but the fundamental analysis is hard to learn with my method fundamental analysis becomes easy and understandable for everyone in trading you have to understand study the reasons the dynamics that drive the prices that's the key it's certainly not an indicator in the overbought who oversold zone that makes a market rise or fall it's not the technical analysis that will tell you where a currency pair or futures will go at least most of the time so 
Let's see how you should proceed. First, you need to research the data that make the markets move. All the markets, stocks, currencies, futures, and so on. And this is the simplest thing to do. Several sites report this data in real time, such as Forex Factory and Investing. You will find the links below in the description. Second, you have to interpret the data to understand what the market situation is. And this, at least initially, is a little less simple. We can divide the main macroeconomic data into four areas. Interest rates, growth, gross domestic product, employment, inflation. What if the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates, if inflation drops, if the unemployment rate rises? Let's see an example. The Federal Reserve decides to cut interest rates by 25 basis points, that is 0.25%. What does that entail? A lower cost of money. So, it's a positive factor for companies that pay less interest, resulting in an increase in the American stock market. At the same time, the cut in interest rates creates a greater circulation of money, which leads to two consequences. A weakening of the US dollar and a rising inflation. Not only Commodities are quoted in dollars, and a weak dollar is a positive factor resulting in higher prices. In addition, commodities have, by their nature, a role of coverage against inflation. So, an increase in inflation leads to a rise in commodity prices. And what about the bond market? The price of the bonds is linked to the trend of interest rates and, more precisely, as interest rates rise, there will be a decrease in the price of bonds, and vice versa. Interesting, isn't it? But this is not always the case. In fact, generally happens what you have seen, but not always you must take into account that sometimes the decisions of a central bank are known before they release, which means that a decision has already been priced into the markets. As for interest rates, and not only, you must always be updated, reading the reports of the central banks in listening to the speeches or reading the transcripts of their presidents. It's probably a process that may be difficult to implement initially, but believe me that over time you will be able to analyze the markets simply and clearly, certainly better than with technical analysis. It's just a matter of practicing. As I said before, trading takes a lot of effort. To press buy or sell on the platform is only the last step. There are no other ways or shortcuts. If you want to become a profitable trader, you have to work hard. Now that you have analyzed the market, and know which direction the price will most likely take, you need to decide when to enter. Here I introduce another concept that most of you likely don't know, the subjective probability. I tell you that no method can give you the perfect market entry, it's all about probability. 
but one step at a time. First, let's see what the subjective probability is, and then how to apply it to trading. The subjective probability is the numeric measure of chance probability that reflects the degree of a personal belief in the likelihood of an occurrence. Subjective probability judgments are people's evaluations of the probability of uncertain events or outcomes. It contains, contains no formal calculations and only reflects the subject's opinions and past experience. Now, let's see how to use subjective probability in our trading. One of the things I told you in this video is to avoid to trade with many markets. Focus only on those you know well. Because it's essential to know well the market that is being traded, so you can understand what the key levels are. In this way, you will know which are the price levels with the highest odds of success for your market entry. Over time, you need to understand how a specific market, stock, currency pair, commodity, and so on, behaves, the movements it makes, and how it does them. That will ensure you have a clear vision and you can identify the statistically better levels to open your trade. Let me give you an example with the currency pair Euro US Dollar. Look at the chart. You will certainly have noticed how the X point XX Q0 levels, in example 10, 1.0920, 1 1.1020, 1.1120, 1.1220, and so on, for Euro US dollar are sensitive price levels. That's just one aspect. The characteristic of Euro US dollar. Once you understand how the currency pair moves, when you know it perfectly, you will no longer even need to open the chart to decide your trade. And what about the take profit? First, you need to know when to take your profit before opening the trade always in the trading plan. Then it has to be a take profit statistically achievable. To establish your, your take profit you have to put into the field all your knowledge of that market and how you did with the market entry use subjective probability. So you have seen that if you want to trade like a fund manager, you need to analyze a market not using the technical analysis and indicators, but understanding the fundamental logic behind that market. You have to read and interpret the main microeconomic data, the reports of the central banks, listening to the speeches or reading the transcripts of their presidents, follow the news, geopolitical events, earnings, and everything that can influence, for better or worse, the market you are analyzing. And then, using your subjective probability, establish the levels of market entry and take profit. Now, let's see the third and the last step to become a profitable trader. How to cancel your emotions. 
it's well known that success in trading is determined by our emotionality. You have to put yourself in the best conditions to trade. The problem with the management of emotions is that we are all different, so it's impossible to have a system that works for everyone without distinction. To erase your fears, anxieties, always in the trading plan, you have to decide how much you are willing to lose with every trade. But how to establish the price where to put the stop loss? The argument I am going to deal with now is more complex and a little known by traders. What is the most I can lose on the investment? This is a question that almost every investor who has invested or is considering investing in a risky asset asks at some point in time. Value at risk VAR, tries to provide an answer, at least within a reasonable bound. Value at risk measures the potential loss in value of a risky asset or portfolio over a defiant period for a given confidence interval. If the value at risk on US dollar Swiss franc is 150 pips at one week 95% confidence level, there is and only a 5% chance that the value of US dollar Swiss franc will drop more than 150 pips over any given week. Value at risk is used by commercial and investment banks to capture the potential loss in value of their traded portfolios from adverse market moments over a specified period. These can be compared to their available capital and cash reserves to ensure that the losses can be covered without putting the firms at risk. However, we use it in a different way. We use the value at risk to decide where to put the stop loss. How? For example, if we decide to buy US dollar Swiss franc, if we put a stop loss 150 pips away from our entry price, we will have 95% probability of not seeing it met by the price. At this point, all you have to do is calculate the correct position size to open, based on the maximum loss that you are willing to suffer, and that you must have already decided in your trading plan. What I have revealed is the way to dispel your doubts about where to place the stop loss and cancel your emotions. In conclusion, now you know exactly what you have to do to become a profitable trader. To trade like an investment bank, a fund manager. I thank you for the time spent watching this video. I hope what you have seen could help your trading. If you are interested to deepen the argument, in the description you find all the information. For anything, you can leave a comment in the section below. The only rule of my channel is good manners. I thank you again for your attention and I wait for you at the next video. Happy trading to you all!